Warning! Alan Moore's Porch contains strong language, sexually explicit material, and graphic science fictional references. Alan Moore's Porch is intended for mature audiences only, and mature is only in the strictest definition thereof. Maturity is a trait that has not been afforded to our host. Listen at your own discretion. Welcome, future children, to Alan Moore's Porch. I am Jay Partridge III. With me, as always, is my stalwart life companion, Rocky Turner. Rocky, say hello to the people. Hello to the people. Now, first episode, uh, uh, a first episode, a, a benchmark. We're setting, we're setting precedent. We're setting a, a goal for ourselves. First of many. Yeah, hopefully, that's, I, I really, we, we've actually, and, and if you, you follow either one of us on Twitter, you, you probably know this, but we, we've been genuinely uh, riding this fucking concept and putting it away wet literally every day. Um, it, basically, it, it's an idea that we've had for a long time, we're finally getting a chance to do it, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm super excited. I've, I've actually, I was sitting at the door waiting for the microphone today like a puppy dog. Just waiting, hoping. Slapping my tail. Getting, a, waiting for an instrument in which to scream into the void. Literally walking out of my door every now and then just checking to make sure that he hadn't come yet. Ah, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So anyway, uh, it, it, podcasting. We're we're new to it. We're 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 young bucks. We're we're young. We're physically fit. We're challenging logic. Uh, first up, we we're act- we're trying to set this up as an actual uh, a little bit of a radio show, kind of legitimacy. Uh, we're trying to go for some legitimacy. Yeah, it's we're 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 polishing up a turd basically. But you know what? It's a great turd. It is. Um. Uh, so the first segment that we're gonna do, uh, we can. Is it's it's a segment that we like to call offerings to the snake god. Uh, of course, as you can see, uh, we're big Alan Moore fans, and uh, you're coming just from the title of the show in itself. And offerings to the snake god is basically us giving you a primer or giving you a little taste of things that that you should be into or things that that you really should uh, be aware of. Excuse me. Um, we actually have some. Uh, we we have a theme. We have a theme song to uh, to to offerings to the snake god. Actually, we do. Let's uh, once we get that queued up. Uh, it's there. We go. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Technical. Difficulty. Yeah. It just say uh, it's shaking the dust. Yeah. Off, yeah. God, yeah we're we're just Listen. We're 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 not professional audio. This isn't Howard Stern. This isn't this isn't XM satellite radio. We don't have a black woman sitting in the sound booth making sure we don't fuck up. We're sitting. In my hovel, I believe is what it would probably be the best the best way to describe hovel it. Hovel is a nice word for trailer. Yeah, it's a very it's it's a very glossy term for trailer. But basically, uh, back to the show. I'm I'm trying. I, I want to try to keep this episode as tight as possible. But I can I can already see that we're we're not. It's lacking. Not, it's lacking not happening. Severely. Um. Uh, do you do you have the do you have the song? Okay. Yeah. There we go. Get that. Get that volume. Uh, basically, yeah, just uh, courtesy of Mr. Dylan. It's offerings of the Snake God is a is, is like I said, it's it's us giving you a taste of what we think you should be into. First off, uh, for our first offering, we are all over the blogosphere. We are all over. Uh, we are all over uh, the the interwebs, the intertubes. Uh, we have a Twitter, Alan Moore's Porch, uh, at Alan Moore's Porch. You can tweet us. We're, we're live tweeting right now during this show, um, yep. and we will we will answer your questions that come live to us. Um, and, and or of course, uh, it really doesn't work live to you right now. Right to you, yeah, because you're technically you're, we're recording and all if of you it's just if you pretend like this is I'm Ira Glass and the, and you're listening on your uh, on your uh, old time tube radio, then yes, it is live to you right now. Um, another thing offering to the Snake God, my second one is uh, Casanova by Matt Fraction and Gabriel Bra uh, Ba. Sorry. Um, 
of Umbrella Academy fame. The, Casanova is basically everything that you'd ever want in comic books. It's a it's a, it's like Danger Diabolique mixed with uh, the Black Hole, mixed with um, uh, Thomas Pynchon, mixed with uh, a healthy dose of uh, of of Heinlein sci-fi. It's really really great, and I kind of have I have a um, a personal connection with this series because the, the the writer Matt Fraction. I was unable to get a couple of issues of it, and I tweeted him on Twitter. Um, t- of course, I tweeted him on Twitter. What the fuck? I didn't tweet him on Reddit for Christ's sake. Um, you tied you tied a piece of paper to a bird, and you made sure that that bird knew exactly where Matt Fraction lived. And you sent the sparrow off. The sparrow <laughs> arrived at his doorstep. I just dark words on dark wings to Matt Fraction. Um, but, uh, yeah, first Game of Thrones reference there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep a tally in my, uh, in my notebook at Game of Thrones references. Game of Thrones references. Um, uh, but, uh, he, he was very, he was super gracious, and he, we exchanged emails, and he actually, he sent me, he sent me the issues that I needed, along with a couple of, uh, a couple of trades signed. He's just a, just a really, he's a beautiful dude. And I, I, actually, I should stop talking about him just solely because I'm already stalking him. Relentlessly on Twitter. You're gonna, you're gonna get a restraint. I really, I just, I, he, I, there's no way that he doesn't ache looking at his Twitter just because he knows that I've mentioned him at least seven dozen times. Anyway, uh, Breaking Bad is back, and uh, if you're not, if you're not watching Breaking Bad, honestly, I feel really fucking sorry for you. Uh, season five is is up and running, and it's still, it's still one of the the greatest and bleakest shows on television. It's still it's still really great. Did you ever you watched a bunch of the episodes with I watched me. oh yeah, I watched quite a few and it literally what I saw just uh just made me want him just to act forever. Yeah. I just like he Somebody on Twitter the other day said that they, they enjoy they enjoy Breaking Bad so much more because they think of it as a prequel series to Malcolm, Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> and I like because because Brian Cranston he's a very he's a very funny dude but he's Jesus he's incredible yeah and he's, he's like the meth Lex Luthor he's now. literally the darkest human being on earth oh yeah it's it's dense um but no series series five um season five because we're in America um the fucking limeys have they, they just they they've infected me with with calling um shows series last uh, offering to the snake god we've got here. Harmon Town, which is another another podcast that you should definitely be listening to. Uh, creator of, of Community, Dan Harmon. Down, the, uh, down to Harmon Town. Down, down, <laughs> down to Harmon Town. That would I, and I, as soon as you he, he texted me the other day talking to me about about how he he was infusing the the words Harmon Town into that amazing Hobbit song, and now that's the only thing I can fucking think about. Uh, but no, it's Dan Harmon, creator of Community, genius, um, uh, savant. A uh, bit of a, a psychopath, uh, but uh, it's him and and Brian Dave or Jeff Davis uh, of um, whose line is an anyway fan uh, fame, and they they have a they have a podcast that they now do. It's it's in the back of Nerd Melt Comics in L.A. and it's it's one of the funniest things that you could possibly ever listen to on the internet. It's it's a little bit uh, it's uh, it's a little bit. More professional than ours, but you know what? Fuck them. Uh, uh, what do you got, sir? You got? Um, I've got a few. Uh, first off, uh, please do follow us on Twitter. We do judge our the success of our lives based on how many nameless, faceless people are following every word we say. It really validates our existence. It does. Um, I, I will. I will first off say that uh, I am a 26 year old man, and I obsessively watch a shit ton of cartoons. Um, and one that I've and one that I've been watching it's it's done with its first season now, uh, but you should watch it the next time it kicks up again, which I don't fucking have when it starts up again. But you'll anywho. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm not I'm not a TV guy. I don't have to tell you when it's on. You've got the fucking internet. You Look it up, it. asshole. Um, it's uh, it's the new uh, Avatar series. Uh, I'm not talking about blue cat people because blue cat people can go fuck themselves. Dance of the wolves in space. Uh, Legend of Korra. Legend of Korra is the new Avatar reincarnation. It's if you were a fan of the first series, basically a continuation. It's the next Avatar in the series. And in this world, it's a, it's a girl waterbender, and she she can do everything. You know, she's really super awesome. And in the first series, 
the the main enemy, the main struggle was a, a someone that wanted to take everybody's powers away, uh, the, the the bending ability. Um, and and I and I really really dig this series because it's whereas the first one was kind of set in like a like a prime like before civilization, like it was very it's like rude, a very feudal. It was very rudimentary, like they like the most highly advanced technology was like a train, and that was just moved by earth bending. Like yeah. It wasn't a motor. This one has like planes, automobiles, all kinds of crazy shit, and it's basically just steampunk. It's yeah, super, you... It's steampunk infused with like magic, and it's super awesome. Um, that's really the only, like, there's that, and I could literally bore the fuck out of you with all the cool music you should be listening to. <laughs> but if, if you want that, just like I say, follow us on Twitter. We'll give you all we need, all, all you need to know. Uh, what's up next, Mr. Parker? We, uh, we decided that, hang on, there we go, um, uh, it, it, this is something, th- this show in itself oh. is something that we've been talking about doing for a while, and uh, Matthew and I are, are very, uh, I, I, uh, I'm trying to think of the best, the best way to, uh, it, it's like a Blake Edwards, uh, Peter Sellers relationship. Yeah, I think it's very, very creator, uh, createy. But that uh, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, uh, there's a, uh, anyway, but we we work together. Genius and puppet. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, uh, God, God and mold of clay. I think. Um, so there's... we know we we we've, we've worked on a, a bunch of projects together, and and this is something that we've always really wanted to do, and we decided to finally, you know. And take our thumbs out of each other's asses and actually do it, and so we we decided that if we were going to do a show, we were we were going to do a show where it was basically just us talking about things that we care about. And the, the first episode this this episode is about fandom in itself, and then we're we're going to discuss a, a a wide number of topics uh, under. The, the, the banner fandom, but basically we, we decided that we should start every show from here on out, after we give our names, giving a qualification of why we're people you should listen to. Why why are we authorities? Why are, why are we the people in the white hats sitting behind uh, our, our, our podium of pretentiousness, lording over you with opinions and, and, and thoughts? You use your mouth prettier in a twenty dollar hole. I really, I, I'm tr- flowery. <laughs> when, when you get I'm, it I'm you... all, I'm all about flowery prose, man. Like when, that's when a, you get like, it in you. I'm really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm imbued with the, with some, some Chuck Barris, uh, hosting pontification. Like, I, I, there's, there's something about this that keep the word small. <laughs> <goddamn> <laughs> word. We're lowballing. No, no, I'm making. I'm, I want him to look. I want him to work for it. It's, I'm already talking down to my audience, and we don't even have an audience. We don't even have. Uh, like, I know that there's one. One chick that's gonna listen to this, and that's about all I know. I, it's yeah, that's but the, even then, I, the they'll probably she'll get, probably cut it off. We're yeah, I think so. We're now at, we're we're now at the minute thirteen. We're losing point. followers. She, we're not even yeah. Well, I'm just I can hear them can hear them changing the non-existent podcast channel. Anyway, so we wanted to start out every episode with us giving um, uh, a qualification of why of, of why we're someone to listen to. My first one, and this is like I said, this is going to be a, a main thing at the beginning of every show. That I I am Jay Partridge, and I know more about the first three American presidential assassinations than I do about my own parents, which is true. I it do. Is. I, I, I put him to the test, which either means that he knows a a shitload about the actual presidential assassinations, or B, could literally give a shit about knowledge on his own parents. <laughs> Which I think is kind of double... They're, the two are not mutually exclusive. Yeah, the two are not mutually exclusive. Um, but that, that's mine. Uh, Rocky, what do you got? My, uh, my authority is based on the fact that I am in a small group of people that both love and respect, and I was mentioning this to somebody on Twitter today, I'm someone who knows and respects the thought process and the application thereof of the two movies that most people consider flops. Popeye, Robert Altman's Popeye. Yes. And uh, Steven Spielberg's 1941. Oh, Jesus. I th- it was you and... 
Blaine, Blaine, Blaine talking yeah. about it. Our, our friend Blaine, Blaine, Blaine Hefner, Hefner is, is an incredible artist. Follow him on Twitter at uh, hefnertron.com. He's on Planet Pulp. There you go. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, we, I was talking to him, and we had t we had discussed earlier, like, I was like, there's two kinds of people in this world. There's people that like, Ro or I was like, there's people that get Robert Altman's Popeye, and there's people that don't. And the same could be said about Spielberg's 1941. Nobody understood that he was doing an homage to, like, like over-the-budget, like, just huge... Screwball super, comedies. Super com like, the ones that were, like, in the 40s. Yeah. Um, and he did... And, and, like I say, Popeye was, like, another homage... His was an homage to, like, silent movies. Like, mm -hmm. it, it was talky, and it had songs by yeah. Harry Nielsen. Yeah, which is incredible. Uh, 1941, I'm super familiar with. It's been years since I've seen Popeye, and I... I, I remember liking it, but I once said I was a kid. 1941, though... Fucking love. It's there's so not a, there's not a wasted frame of that entire movie. Pop, Popeye. I watched it literally the, again the other day. I'm like, I remember reading a book, and they were like, "This movie is one of the worst movies of all time." And I was like, "I don't remember it being that shitty." And so I went back and rewatched it, and I was like, "The whoever wrote that book was completely up their own ass." So I understand film theory <laughs> more than a guy who writes books about it. <laughs> That's us, and that's that's that's, that's a, a cool that's a qualification given to us by ourselves. Um, but no, in 1941, I think is genius. I don't it's understand so why you know, I, I don't know if I can trust he, anybody that doesn't like 1941. He the John Williams score for that. Uh, it's so good. And it's like dun 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 dun. dun. It's just super patriotic. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, uh, and then and fucking Belushi constantly splashing yeah, his, splashing his face with coffee and punching people out. Uh, fucking otter. Otter, um, oh god damn it, what's his name? Um, Otter, he's Otter, Otter, Otter. Uh, if I tried to fuck that guy, uh, uh, fuck that chick in the plane, oh uh, god damn it, it's so funny, it's, uh, now I, I really want to fucking watch 1941. Of, uh, oh, here's another quote. Ah, yeah, that, yeah, ah, that guy, no, Mandark, the, or the, yeah, Mandark's, the, the, the nerd in that movie was Mandark, no, I was gonna say, uh, Tim Matheson, that's Tim name. Matheson, yes. Tim Matheson, you know what his first job was? What? Justin Partridge? Uh-uh. His first job was the voice of Johnny Quest. What? Yeah, he was the voice of Johnny Quest. Holy shit! Yeah. Oh god damn it! I'd, uh, we it's, might have to take a, a break just solely because I need to change. I need yeah. I need, to, I, need to, I need to get all the cum out of my uh, pants. Right. Okay. So into the first into the breach, my friends. This episode's about fandom, and um, we've. We're huge fans of just things in general. Like we're I, there. There are things that I enjoy more so than than other things, of course. But uh, uh, God damn it, this uh, bullshit. There's no way. Uh, that's, uh, Thank you, cock ban up. Just ban banter. I, I I I blew. I shot my wad the other with the with the pontificating in the beginning of the show, and now when we actually start talking about well, shit, I'm when not we're getting to the meat, you're not going to say. But you're not going to be able to say fucking anything. Just chaff. Just um, but. I'm I'm a huge comic book fan. I'm a big film fan. I'm uh, I, I I just enjoy things, and it seems now the fact that because there was in the in the mid two thousands or so, like around two thousand four, two thousand five, yeah. there was a big explosion of of geek culture. We we, we finally were were becoming more of more of the mainstay and, and, and less of the fringe because of the successes of, of the Raimi Spider-Man films and the and X-Men and, and uh, Singer's X-Men movies. And so it became more prevalent in the culture. But, that being said, now... Every glorification has its cause. Yeah, and it just... It, for now, it, it it's almost a like a souring, it seems. of, of So that's, that's basically what, what this episode is about. We're going to discuss a very of uh, a numerous amount of topics or and, and situations in which fandom has gone bad and and can it be saved? The first one that I would like to get into is recently um, HBO premiered a couple a uh, crop of uh, brand new shows. Um, uh, the the ones in question we're going to be talking about are Girls by Lena Dunham um, and in the newsroom the new Aaron Sorkin show. I uh, Girls has finished its first season, and uh, Newsroom, I think it's on its fifth 
fifth or sixth episode that was on Sunday. They're both great shows. They're both incredible shows. But there was this very odd critical backlash that happened within uh, the, the span of both of these shows premiering that uh, with girls, it was this very odd... I, I don't. Feminist, I, I don't want to say that because that sounds like it's a little too extreme. Yeah. But yeah, it was like this. This like because it's it's very funny and it's it's very it's Dark. it's super heavy. It's like the British Office. Yeah. Like it's it's, it's uncomfortable. It's watch. really funny, but it makes your skin crawl. But there was this weird kind of a backlash against against a creator, Lena Dunham, who's an who's a, in my opinion a very gifted and and funny writer. That's. It, it, it was almost like it was almost like she was getting slammed for being talented. Like it was very, it was very odd to watch. Yeah. The same thing happened with the newsroom when when the pilot of the newsroom premiered. There was this, there was this very odd critical and and like in this and when I say critical, I don't mean like a bunch of bitchy high strung nerds on yeah, the no, internet. No, no, no. I I don't mean that. I mean like general, like general respected, populace. like. Legitimate critics, like like not, not not someone who's got like a Tumblr and and time to kill. This is someone who gets paid to do this. And after the premiere of the newsroom, there was this odd kind of like uh, it was the same thing where people were being pissed at Sorkin for being Aaron Sorkin um, yeah, for that writing was, that a was Sorkin the main, show. That was the main thing I kept seeing is that people were like, "It's too fucking Sorkiny," and I was what? like. He's fucking it's Aaron, Aaron Sorkin. Sorkin. If it was somebody else right there Aaron Sorkin kind of shit, then yeah, you could bitch all you want. But it's Sorkin doing a Sorkin show, and and I and I'm a huge, huge Aaron Sorkin fan. When Sorkin is done, when Sorkin's writing is done very well, it's like music to me. Like it's it's incredible, and I can understand and see tropes and 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 motifs recurring within Sorkin's work, but I, never at any point in time is that deterred from my in from my um, uh, enjoyment of, this, of the show. Uh, that being said, my, my main general question to you, sir, is, like, what... What facilitates this? What? Wh how can someone look at someone and be like, this is too good? This... this uh, uh, how, how is this... How can this be uh, understood? Be, be, be shitty about them being... Yeah. Good. I think it comes down to just people... Like I think our our like our culture as a whole has just gotten overwashed with shit. Like everybody seems to think that this mediocre comedy is what the pinnacle is. It's cheap, pulp. People love to eat it. It's easy digest. It's easy. It's, it's very easily digested. Kind of like The Office. Yeah. The British Office was wildly uncomfortable. Yeah. It's a huge success among like a lower. Yeah. Um, and I then, think it's perfect television. And then when the and when it came over, it became less uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and people ate it up. And it's still if, going on. Exactly. If it was as uncomfortable as David Brent, yeah, nobody would fuck. It would literally last one season, <laughs> and then it would be done. That's why pe people don't like to be uncomfortable. I think that's what it boils down to. Yeah. And I mean, I haven't watched either one of these because I don't have HBO. Mm. Um, but I think you. I, I I genuinely think you'd like Newsroom. I don't think you'd dig Girls. Um. It's because I don't think you like women. I, it's, not that I don't, it's not that I don't. I'm like sorry, women. I couldn't. I, I, I mean, couldn't it's, you... it's, an, it's an honest observation. <laughs> I don't. I have little interest in a female protagonist, mm. and I'm, I'm all for women's rights. I'm, I'm all. I'm literally. I love women. I think they deserve nothing but the best. But I just have a hard time following, like a female protagonist. I've watched Bridesmaids wildly after mm. it was. It was something to do. Cora, Legend of Cora, is a female protagonist. Yeah, and she's just she's kind of a like a tomboy, yeah. and like, but see, like when it's a woman, like, uh, when it's a woman that's very, oh, I'm so fucking dark and moody, man. It's just <laughs> I don't give a shit. Go Sylvia Plath yourself. I've got shit to do. Um. <laughs> But, uh, like, because, cause, uh, I don't know if you watched, because uh, it just made me think of it because of that 
some whore that you used to associate yourself with. Um, I, I saw the trailer. Wow. I saw the trailer for Perks of Being a Wallflower. Yeah, and it's literally I have no interest. It's literally the most pretentious. I have no, piece of shit, no interest. Dribble, in that. just god awful looking. And, and that book is that I, uh, I, unpopular opinion time. I understand that book's cultural landmark. I understand why people latch to it. I don't give a shit. I could give two squirts of piss about that book. And, like, that being said, I've read young adult novels, and I've, I, I've read a, a good deal of them, and I've read a bunch of good ones. But I've also read Perks of Being, being a Wallflower, and I've no, no <laughs> fucking interest in it. They, I, they I didn't no, need to make it. I'm good. They didn't need to make it. I'm really okay. Um, okay, going into uh, another thing that sits, it's kind of the other side of the same coin. Um, recently, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but a little movie uh, about Batman came out recently. Uh, I The Dark Knight Rises. Flounders, I believe. Oh. Dark Knight Kisses? The, Kisses the Girls? Dark Knight Dark, Kiss the Girls, that's what Kiss it is. The girls. Kiss, Kiss the, the girls. girls. Okay, yeah, that's what it is. Kiss the Girls starring Batman came out uh, today. Uh, no, uh, this recent. Sorry, because now I was just I was going through kiss the movie Kiss the Girls and then just supplanting Batman into it. And, and him just though. him just screaming at um, what's her name Judd uh, Ashley, Ashley Judd, Judd yeah. just the entire movie. Um, but no, anyway. Tell me why they're all. Darn it! Um, Dark Knight Rises came out, and uh, a week before there was there's this big. Brew ha ha. There was a, there was a big hoot nanny. I believe the children are calling it. The kids the kids these days. Kids these days. Um, uh, on on Rotten Tomatoes, where um some some people some some people saw the movie. It, and once again, these are these are respected critics. These are people that know what they're talking about. Saw Dark Knight Rises, gave it a less than stellar review. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then the vitriol and just the just the pure unadulterated <laughs> internet slobbering fanboy oh, hate just poured itself onto the comment section of um of Rotten Tomatoes. So much so that Rotten Tomatoes shut down the comment section of their website. Um I didn't know that. They did. They shut they, for a while. Oh, okay, I was like, did they shut it off? And I'm it? I'm not entirely sure if it's still, it's still up, up now, but it, it it it's it was down for a bit. There's no fucking reason for th there's no, there's absolutely because I've seen Dark Knight Rises. I, 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 you haven't seen I've, it yet. I have not seen it. I've, uh, I don't, I'm not gonna spoil it for because I, I I don't know how how much you care about spoilers or. or I would or, rather watch my own mother die than have a movie <laughs> spoiled. Okay, maybe that's, maybe that's wow. Maybe I that's would that's rather that's... I would rather Ray Fiennes shoot my little sister in a red coat than okay, know no, what no. happens in The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, I would I would no I would rather like I really do not like spoil. That's why I after the first like big big trailer for Dark Knight Rises. I shut myself mm. off. I never watched any more trailers. I wanted to keep myself fresh because I wanted a, a completely. Because if I if I could, I would have the experience that like the fucking film executives have, like where we've just been hearing shit and then he just shows us the movie. Yeah, he's done with the movie. Uh, I'd I'd rather have that and have like literally no lead up to it and just have a completely fresh. But that makes sense. Um, uh, w um, it's it's good. It's a good movie. I, that's that's what I've heard from people I trust. It is. It's a, it's a really good movie. There are glaring, huge problems with it. Like there there are, uh, and it's it, but it's a good movie. It's a really it's Nolan at his most comic booky, and it and it's great. That's that's kind of what like when uh when I when they saw when they were ramping up for it and they and they released the first trailer and Nolan was like people were like well we can't fucking understand Bane. And Christopher Nolan's like, ah, eh, fuck you. I don't give a shit. I don't like, care if you can't understand. It's so it. great. He's like, I made the movie. All you got to do is sit there and fucking watch it. That actually, that th this is not really a spoiler, but they did they did alter Bane's voice for the film, and honestly, it makes me enjoy it more because his his voice is literally ADR'd to the point that it just it just sounds like Tom Hardy talking into like what 
the Daleks use for the their their voice, and it's incredible. It's so so great because there's like there's that that I but uh, now I just stay Dalek versus yeah, Batman. Yeah, Daleks versus Batman. Gotham will burn. Gotham will burn. Um, but uh, it's it's because there there are points that that Tom Hardy like there there are lines that he says that are that are supposed to be menacing or that are supposed to sound really grim. But just his voice makes it so fucking funny, and it just that that the first time I saw it, I it like kind of took me out of the movie. The second time I saw it, I was like, "This is candy. Like, this is just fucking great." <laughs> like, Victory like, has defeated you. Like that's basic. That's exactly what he sounds like, except muffled, and they jack the levels up to like eleven. I mean, just and just the fact that Tom Hardy's doing. A screwy character is just it, yeah. it's worth the price of admission anyway but that that leads me into another I, I wanted to talk about that because I wanted to I wanted to talk about this this other thing of our fandoms creating bad fans like ha, are, are a like a, it being such a close tight-knit community of some of like this is ours and this is no one else's that's cool just being in that group but is that yeah. creating a group of people that are being I, shitty to other people that aren't fans? I don't think... I think what it is is it's really not... I don't think it's it's making... It's, it's not making shitty fans. The internet is providing these shitty fans with a with a stepping stool. <laughs> with the, with the with way the means which... With the means to making their voice hurt. Yeah. Because, like, before, they would just sit in their basement, piss and moan and jerk off into a sock. Like, that was it. But now they've got the internet to pitch on where anybody can read their opinion. Yeah. And, and they can become and, this and bastion. You, and you automatically think that when you put something on the internet that your opinion means something. Like like this, for example. We're bullshitting <laughs> in a hot-ass trailer into a $60 mic. We're nobodies. But we think our opinions well, we, matter. But we, we're, we're Woodward and Bernstein. Yeah, like we're, we're, we're the smartest people of our generation. <laughs> and we're... we're like, it, 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 the internet provides fans with a means to be shitty. Mm -hmm. Like, that, the fucking guy on, uh, that the Brits got their panties tied up in a bunch over. It has nothing to do with comics. I, I don't, um, what's... This, this, this Olympic swimmer, um, or diver, I, I'm really sorry, Britons. 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 There's a toho. I, I'm really sorry, uh... He, no, he well, now I have no British listeners. He was, he, he was either a diver or a swimmer. He, he was in, he was a swimmer, and he didn't he didn't win. He was he was really like the whole country was amping up for him to win, and yeah. he didn't. And this one guy, I don't know if he was British or American or what nationality, because his fucking Twitter feed is his Twitter bio was gay as shit. <laughs> um, he, did it have a dude blowing another dude? Like, it was what, two what, dudes blowing. It was just a, and, and just in, a gif. And of... in the biography, it was like I love blowing dudes. <laughs> um, gay the gay music. Gay the gay. Wheelies, wheelies. <laughs> no, um... First IT crowd joke. <laughs> he... He... Uh, it, it was really stupid. Anyway, he tweeted at this diver, and this diver had come on, and he'd been like, hey, look, you know, I missed out. I'm paraphrasing the fuck out of this, because yeah. I literally <laughs> just... <laughs> Cliff I'm, notes as I'm, hell. I'm running on, like, very little sleep right now, but he was he was like... He, he basically was like, oh, I'm really I'm really sorry, you know, I'm, I, I got an opportunity, and it was a really great opportunity, and I enjoyed the hell out of it, but I didn't do it. Yeah. And this dude said, uh, you know you let down your father. Wow! Wait, wait, wait! This dude's dad died. <laughs> like, not long ago. I'm sorry. So, so wait, so then the guy, the, the swimmer or the diver or whatever... He's like, you know, you, you work really hard and you have a whole network of people that really support you and there's still people like this. And he retweeted the guy and literally the whole nation of Great Britain just the split itself in half. Just completely... Like the internet in Britain just split in half <laughs> and like like space monsters started coming up. <laughs> it's like, the opening of 28 Days Later now just, because of this retweet. Exactly. Just, and like literally... The end is insanely fucking nigh. Everybody that flies a Union Jack is literally demanding that this motherfucker gets banned on Twitter. Wow. I'm serious. Like, this is hardcore. And I just get the image of them, like, them dragging... Like, they find this guy, they drag him to the steps to the of, the old Bailey, of, old, of the old Bailey. Of the old Bailey. Set up the gallows. <laughs> yeah, they're just like... And now... Black, black benefit, benefit of the Queen. Your ass... 
underscore nine 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 shall be put. His in underscore. He has like an I'd, underscore sixty nine. I've seen. I've seen some of our British followers. Uh, they've been constantly talking about this guy. That's him. But I didn't know. I didn't know that this was the story. The crime that he committed. Yeah, I didn't know that this was his giant atrocity. They'll lock him in the tower. Of is Lander. that he was shitty like everyone else on the internet? Uh, uh, Step aside, Sir so Walter Riley. We got a new one. Yeah, and it's like, well, we got to wait. It's, I, they're gonna they're drag him before the Queen. But no, I I say bad fans because I I can literally spend the entirety of this episode talking about shitty shitty fans. fans. Yeah. It's like there's a dude that goes to my comic book shop. I told you about him, and now I'm gonna tell the audience about him. And um. Slap his nuts anonymously on the internet. Because <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what hey, that's what we love it for. Um, that's that's why the aliens gave it to us. Um, uh, they he's a dude that literally I, I've had like three long conversations with him, and every time he's made it a point to fucking roll his eyes and 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 sigh and be fucking shitty about some of the things that I like. And and it's like him being actively shitty about it. It's like, oh man, you read Morrison, blah, blah, blah. Right, and just him being just really, really shitty about it. And like, I I can understand that because I <laughs> I'm not going I'm not going to sit here and lie to you people and tell you that I haven't gotten in somebody's face because they don't they've never seen House or uh, House, House do it. I've never I've never called someone a bigot. For for not liking Batman the Animated Series, I'm not gonna tell you that I haven't. I don't know why I would call him a bigot. I just know like why that, like like why that equates to racism. Like you don't like Bruce Tim, well you clearly don't like anyone that isn't white. Um, uh, but no, I, I'm not. I'm, I, yeah, <laughs> literally the whitest person in the world making one of the whitest things ever. Um, but no, I I've now. Getting older, I I'm <laughs> getting older. Like I'm like I'm sixty. You wise and old. Yeah, like like I've 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 uh, been, I've been around the block time or two. Um, I've seen some things. I've, I've seen some things. things. I've read like four books, and now I'm a fucking I'm uh, I, I'm I'm Michael Gambon. Like I'm I'm some sort of. I'm some sort of wise and chap British actor. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> just just I'm some old British actor. <laughs> Who's made his living? <laughs> anyway, um, I, I'm not going to say that I that I have been shitty to people, but just uh, it, it starts to get to the point where like you you, you start... shed your Brody from Mallrats image, like you yeah. shed you shed a certain uh, you grow out of it antagonistic. Fuck you if you don't like. Wild. Exactly, and like, and now you just keep it bottled up inside, and like, I have a tumbler now. <laughs> yeah, like, I, have t- I have a tumbler to podcast now, so now I can, I can just. I bitch to you people. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just rip open my spleen and let every horrible thing that I've wanted to say spill out onto the internet. Um, but I just, I don't understand why that has become and 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 dark. I, I it, it sucks to keep going back to Dark Knight Rises, but. That's that's the best and most extreme example that I can use is that people. A perfect example, perfect fucking example. This happened to me recently. I, I went to work and there's a dude at work that he's a huge Nolan verse fanboy, and he has. The only reason that I'm telling you this is to give you a, a, a an explanation of why I'm going to do a funny voice, but he has a. I like that. I like he that. He has a very. He has a very pronounced and prevalent list. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, and oh, it's God. and I it's for those of you who don't know, I work at a coffee shop, so I'm trapped behind this bar of syrups and um, pastries. I, ice crushes. Like I can't I can't leave this area. So I saw this dude at the midnight premiere and uh, I, I didn't really talk to him and so he comes up to me, and I see him coming, and I'm just like, Jesus, I'm going to have to fucking talk to him now about this movie. And so he comes up to me, and he's like, yo, what do you think of The Dark Knight Rises? And, yeah, just, uh, and and so I was like, it was, it was good. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really entertaining. It was, it was, it was really sharp. It was really impeccably directed. I thought it was good. 
different choices in well, games. Yeah, and so, and because uh, then he was like, well, I it was I thought it was the most the most fitting and perfect ending of the of the Nolan verse possible, and I have taken it upon myself. Uh, once when we decided to do this this podcast and when when and in in my Michael Gamboning um, growing up. Um, I, uh, I'm just gonna keep, I just wanna try to, try to use that as a, use that as a verb. It's like Lars von Trieriest. It's <laughs> Michael Gambonning. Um, uh, but I've decided to try to be a, as good of a fan as possible. I've, um, shameless plug, I now write for this, this, um, comic book website, betweenthepanels.com, uh, follow them at, uh, BP... Uh, btpcast.com uh, uh, shameless uh, just shoehorning as much pimping as possible into this uh, it's, uh, we're willing to sell ourselves out as much as possible I'm bas- it's basically just kind of a point where like uh, 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 available in all wall bogs like um, but he I've decided to try to be as as good of a fan as possible I, I want to be a, a have a a sort of a critical view of, of things that I like, or, or like I, not everything that I that I read or love or follow is not, um, uh, it, it's not gospel. It's not it's it's not perfect. A perfect example. I'm I'm watching a bunch of episodes of Doctor Who right now that are shitty. That are some of the shittiest. Most dreadful episodes of television that I've ever watched. Oh you, my God, they're I they're terrible. Jesus God, they're awful. Like uh, six every doctor, six doctor. Yeah. Yeah, it's the six doctors tenure, like in the in the early eighties. And Jesus God, it's bad. And so he's sitting there, a, a perfect ending, a perfect Nolan vs. Batman. And so I was like, no, it's you know, it's good. I have problems with it, but you know, it was a very entertaining movie. And just right then. The fucking glaze, like you can see, you can see the, like, like in cartoons when Tom, like when when Jerry got hit in the head with an anvil and the fucking um, the the slot machines that go over his eyes, that that happened. And so he's sitting there and he was like, "Yo, uh, what uh, what problems do you have?" And so I was like, "I'm okay. I've I've You're I've made, I've made my bed. I've you know this is I'm good fan. I'm gonna single handedly." Change fandom, you know. I'm Hal Jordan. Here we go. So I, I lay out my, my problems with the film, which I, I do I do have a certain a certain number of problems with the film, just thematically, and there are things just within the 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 structure of the film itself that I have problems with. And none of it. He's hearing none of it. There's no. I can have literally no other opinion other than. It's, it's the greatest, it's the greatest film. movie ever made, and that that's boring to me. Like, there's no there there's no room for discussion. There's no room for analysis. Like, there there's no uh, I I don't understand why. I mean, I I was a huge fan of the Dark Knight, the 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 other one, the second in the series. Yeah. Um, and I and at first, like, I was like really like fuck you about people being like, oh, his Batman voice is too fucking weird. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, it's it's because he has to disguise it so much because he's talking to people that could actually. I mean, he's not. That's like, Bruce Wayne. Yeah, that's, like, that's as soon as he starts that's talking. Every time, because every time, because I, I used to watch the uh, the Adam West show. Yeah. Like religiously when I was a kid, and like I watched it when I got older, and like literally somebody had kidnapped a friend of Bruce Wayne's, and it was him talking on the phone to Batman and Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> It's like, hey, hey, Bruce, when did you get there? Hey, like, that's literally like, because he's not changing his voice at all. Like, making no like, attempt to and, disguise and was, it. And that was something that I kept saying, was that Bruce Wayne is, is somebody in this town. Everybody knows who Bruce Wayne mm. is, because he owns fucking shit town. Everything. He's, he's, he's built he's, everything that's he's really He's Gotham's nice. first family. Like. He's, he's, like, he's built, like, all the fucking subways, all the trams. Like, he keeps that shit running. I keep the lights on that goddamn place, <laughs> so he can't just walk around talking. Yeah, Bruce that's really can't. That's why is Bruce Wayne and, dressing like Batman? And I and I, and I kind of I completely understood that. And first of all, uh, I almost said Patrick Bateman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker fought dragons. You know the the one. So, you know the one. His his Bruce Wayne is blocks. amazing. It's his, really great. And his Batman's really good. 
But I do recognize the fact that he does kind of go a little bit nutty. But sometimes. still, even when I read when I read Batman comics, I always attribute a different voice in my head to Batman and, and Bruce Wayne. And the only and the only way the way that I stopped the way that I was like, okay, this is this is officially over the line. He kind of he kind of jerked his dick a bit. Was because there was one guy that did Batman. And he was able to do a Bruce Wayne and a Batman that sounded miles apart, and they still sounded com- com- completely reasonable. Kevin Conroy. Kevin Conroy. <laughs> Kevin Conroy is the greatest ah, thing that Jesus. happened to Batman since they drew his ass so, in a book. Yes, yeah, since fucking Bob Kane made that motherfucker. Have did you ever? I, I know I tweeted it, but did you watch? They did a redoing of the Dark Knight Rises trailer with. Kevin Conroy and Adrian Barbeau playing oh, Catwoman, Catwoman, and, Catwoman and Batman. And Batman. It, the hub, the hub was doing this thing. God uh, was the hub. I know, right? So great. Just they're genius. They're just uh, they're, they're super awesome. It's like cable access without the shittiness. Like it's just they just play this random <laughs> no Jerry Springer. Yeah, they just play no. this random bullshit, and it's just great. Because they're the ones that play the 60s Batman show all yeah. the time, don't they? they play, like, it plays like at 2 or 3 o'clock in the God morning. Damn but it. Like they play like, like a line. block. Like they, yeah, play, they play like, like 3 or 4 that. hours of it. Uh, God damn it, that's awesome. But they did a, they did a, a, it was a recutting of the Dark Knight Rises trailer done with footage from, 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 from Batman the Animated Series yeah. and with Kevin Conroy and Adrian Barbeau. And it just, and, and even like, I, I started replaying um, Arkham City and... Just Kevin Conroy's dulcet fucking tones and, coming and, out of, and there were two different voices. Yeah, when you because um, uh, 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 Matthew was was, uh, but I, I I keep doing this. Rocky is his nickname. Matthew is his Matthew's real name. My, uh, so I'll I'll be switching a lot. And I, other than calling him like my I go, my, I go jizz, both ways. my dip my jizz trap or my 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 stalwart cum dumpster, I'll probably I'll just say Rocky and then and, and, and Matt. But anyway, he let me borrow um. Uh, Batman the Animated Series, the first the first season, and and watching it, I re- that was one thing that really struck me was that his Bruce Wayne was very aloof and very kind of flighty, like it was it was really softer voice, but his fucking Batman was hard as nails, tight, tight. like fucking like fucking real hard. real real pipe hitting. Yeah. But no, I I always attributed a different voice to Batman in the comic books, yeah. and so the 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 voice never really bugged me. But I just I don't understand why. Batman Begins and Dark Knight are great films. Like they're really, really great. I, I, I'm not disputing the fact they're they're made by one of the greatest motherfuckers making movies today, Christopher Nolan. The dude, I would literally watch him filming somebody taking a shit on a glass table and pay the eight fifty. That I will, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I don't fucking care. I think he's great. Um, that being said, I don't attribute these Batman films. To gospel, I don't understand what why these they're so canonized that we can't we because like, the guys at um, Badass Digest that one of the the, the main um, the writers for Badass Digest he recently reposted a his review that he did for Batman Begins and he got death threats over it because he didn't like it. That's their job. A critic's job is to take a fil- is to take a film into an Analyze it. It's it's to sh- it's to make sure that that film is worth our time. This is something that it's been it's an age old tradition that I find super noble. I, I find film criticism and just criticism in general to be a very noble profession. And the fact that people are so slobberingly devoted to this fan base, yeah, to this fandom, is just so insane to me. I don't understand it. Yeah, it's completely fucking needless. Anyway. Instead, I just we keep fucking harping on Batman. They're they're great films, but you know they're not fucking perfect. Um, so I, and even now, like uh, uh, going back to the do fandoms create bad fans? I, I recently speaking of just going back to Batman, I've went and I've reread some Grant Morrison Batman comics. That when I read them month to month, I fucking hated. I I just it was just it was I couldn't. Crack them! They were just so they they were so just just 
completely locked in their own continuity. I just it's Batman Rest in Peace that that that, oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that story arc That's where they where they yeah. kill Batman or Batman has his own the Zurin ah whatever. I went back. Nobody and, can die anymore. Yeah, it's, I went back, and that's a we could. That's another episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't want to start the tirade just yet. Um, but I, I went back and I started reading from the beginning of his run, and I, I, I really, I got a, a better sense of the comic. I got a better sense of the story and a, and a better sense of how it flows as a complete story arc. Yeah, and I fucking. No, I haven't, because I haven't been to my shop in a while, but I, I guarantee that, because I told the guy, the guys up there, because it's like fucking Cheers, it's like a shitty, non -al like non-alcohol serving Cheers, where like I come in, everyone's like, ah! and then we, we all slap each other's dick about comic books. Um, I didn't say that new damn yeah, it. yeah, it's basically, because there's a dude that literally comes up there and he brings a fucking 12 pack of this clear cool, refreshing Keystone Light that we're enjoying. Always fresh. Always Keystone. I always do it. Bless you. Uh, it's always smooth. Um, and, that's, and now I'm just waiting for us to get a cease and desist letter from, uh, <laughs> from, uh, from honestly, Keystone Light. I expect to get a cease and desist letter from them, uh, from Alan Moore. <laughs> I, I will say, though, if Alan Moore does listen, I will only accept a cease and desist if he comes and gives it to us himself, or like it's written on like like scrolled papyrus, Ar archaic, on Ar with like Maester black ink, yeah, done like, with a phoenix feather quill. Yeah. That it I want, I want it plucked from the feathers of the most rare bird on earth that he killed with his own teeth. I want. <laughs> that's the only season this doll. A pheasant that he cracked the neck of. Well, the the blood flowed around his knuckles. This is all true about Alan Moore, by the Running way. Running like, naked we, through the snow, <laughs> snapping a bird's neck in his mouth like a dog. It's this. All of these are actual things that Alan Moore do does. Um, but anyway, um, uh, I guarantee that like as soon as I go up to that comic book shop, because I told them that I was going to reread all this stuff and I'm finished with it now. Um, I guarantee fucking tea that as soon as I get up there, I'll get I'll get shit for liking it. Because I did the same thing with Final Crisis. When I when I reread Final Crisis, um, another Grant Morrison um, puzzle box of a fucking comic book series, um, I, I reread it in a, in a collected format, and it was fucking great. I thought it was really really awesome because it, it flows better as a collected uh, as a collected edition. But I know that that there's no way that these people at this comic book shop can can uh, um, deal with the fact that someone's opinions have changed or that the fact that their that their tastes have evolved like there's no room for for new ideas or, or new uh new interests and which, likes which is funny because i've noticed a lot of nerds bitching about the fact that there's nothing new and when something new does come along <laughs> they're like god damn it they should have just stood with classic <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is actually a very very good point the fact that like there's there's a con people are constantly opining for new ideas, or constantly like just just really desperate, just like why well, can't they do anything original? Why are there so many remakes? And DC was like, you know what? We'll restart the whole fucking universe. And they're like, that's fucking stupid. Eh, because it kind of fucking was. No, I mean, was. This I one, <laughs> we're gonna do it to get fa fans back. No, you're no, not. Like, you're gonna hey, look, like, because they're literally you're gonna confuse the shit out of everybody. There are four fucking books that are worth reading and that whole entire fucking relaunch and they launched 12 yeah, like uh, and not I that it might even be more it's like 24 yeah, they launched a shitload and oh god damn it uh, once again that could be an entirely new episode Another I'm episode. trying to try not to because then I could just talk about all the fucking continuity holes that are t and they still they still haven't fucking like established what has happened and what happened in, in, yeah. in the actual in the universe? Canon. In the actual universe itself of yeah. the New Fifty Two, like no, everyone's just like we don't know. And <laughs> uh, god damn it, I, Dan Dido, hey, Dan, yeah, Dan Dido. If I ever fucking see you on the street, I'm gonna kick you square in your squat, Olmac loving dick. There's no uh, Jesus, God in heaven. Okay, um, Man, boy, bitches. It's, yeah, just yeah. I'm, I'm real. I'm trying to get. Uh, because, like, I, as if you motherfuckers haven't noticed now, I'm a huge comic book fan. I, I'm, like, I'm, I'm Jared Leto selling my TV for more comics. Like, I just, I'm screwing over my mom 
to try to get more comics, and uh, it's uh, the New 52 shit. Anyway, um, going into, like, and I'll, this is the, the wrap-up of, of my topics that I have. Uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 feel, like, I, I feel like I've, uh, I, I've uh, uh, tried to squander the, the, the time, because we're, we're now at the 54-minute mark, and I've talked to oh, shit. Fuck it, I've well, talked to shit ton. Um, but it's, show's always the biggest. And, um, there's a, it's a disturbing trend that I've now noticed within, um, the incoming generation, which makes me feel particularly Michael Gambon, um, when I say, um, but it, they've now started to use fandom as fashion. Does this, does this make any yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. And I went on a kind of a tirade the other day about the the main culprit. <laughs> yeah. Because um, uh, I, I answered your question, I answered the guy's question after you'd already talked to him about it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, never mind. But, go ahead. Um, it, it, Invader Zim <laughs> is my main, is the main offender as the as the hives would as love to sing. As the hives would say, you as, know. As the hives would love to sing. Um, Boy, they fell off the face of the earth. Didn't they? But they're still great. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, 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 sure, yeah, sure. sorry. <laughs> we've, I've, we've literally spawned seven episodes. We'll, we will never be want of topics. <laughs> no. Because we'll just sit here we'll just, and we'll just, I'll just re-listen to this episode and just be like, oh, well, oh we can oh, talk yeah. about that. Um, but there is a, there, there's a disturbing horrible trend that the fact that Invader Zim has yet to be... Because Invader Zim has been off the air. Off, off live. Off, yeah, off actual, like, regular rotation, Inter- yeah. like, new episodes are being produced for years. Oh, yeah. Like, at least three. But this current... Maybe even more. Hot um, topic... Mech generation. Yeah. These fucking these roving bands. You've seen them. These roving Super bands. Super skinny white bitches walking around the mall. Fucking mindless self indulgence fan clubs are just are roaming America's malls and America's skate parks, um, decked completely dressed to the nines in Invader Zim and gear. Sure that was on when they were still wearing underwear. There's no. Fucking way that they watched this show live. I watched this show live. I, I'm not. Once again, this makes me Michael Gambon. But this is me. But this is uh, that show. I've watched it recently because it comes on Nicktoons. Nicktoons, yeah. Um, like in the middle of the night because nobody fucking wants to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it comes on super that's, late that's night. Very apt. Because it comes on at they're like potheads are up and three o'clock in the morning. It Jesus. comes on at three o'clock in the morning, um, and I've watched it a couple of times. And every time I start watching it, my like because it carries over after we've watched because uh, they brought uh, the nineties or all that. They brought that. Back, yeah, 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 which is super awesome. Which is great. Um, they show that afterwards, and my wife every time we watch it, she's like, "Kind of forgot how fucking weird this show was." And I was like, "Yeah, it's it's not it's not particularly good. It's, <laughs> it's not great. It's not good." And all respect to and I I I do not know his name, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, nerds. I don't know his name. The guy that played Daggett, the guy who's in Vader. So I've no. Oh, is he the voice? Yeah, I didn't know that. Daggett, Daggett, the, the yeah. Angry Beavers is is the voice of, and he's huge. He's a huge voiceover. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's the voice of. Uh, Zim. Zim. And the characters, I think it was a show that was made uh, not at the right time. And because of its popular, like, like afterbirth, <laughs> um, the placenta, the placenta that, that spewed forth from the canceling of this cartoon. Um, I think because of that, like, everybody's really harping on it because it was such a, a weird fucking show. It's not as... It's insane. Like, it's that's all it is. It's just a weird fucking show. 
I don't. Uh, it's like if you if it's like if Tim Burton didn't have anybody telling him what he could and couldn't do. Like that's exactly what. Without it is. an editor, yeah. If he just like Tim Burton without an editor is Invader Sam. <laughs> It's just him being weird and throwing shit on the wall. Uh, I like movie shit. magic and I wear big Jackie O glasses. I'm going ma- to uh, make a giant spider thing crawl around. I, um, I just, when it was on, because you're, you're a bit older than me. So it, I just, when it was, when it was on, I was probably. I didn't watch it when it was on, by the way. I watched a little bit of it because every one of their fucking dogs thought that that I would. I, it was the Big Bang Theory of of my of, your of, of my growing up. Growing up. Partic- it's, this is a tangent that we're gonna go on. The Big Bang Theory can fuck itself. Right up its own ass. I, I'll we'll talk about it later. Finish up the talk. But, uh, anyway, this uh, but we're gonna I I'm gonna come back to how horrible the Big Bang Theory is in a second. Um, but. I watched a little bit of it when it was on because everybody and their fucking dogs were was like, "Oh yes, you need to you need to watch the show. It, it's going to be completely up your alley." See, it was it was it was below my generation because it, it was with your generation. It was with it me, wasn't. yeah, yeah. Because like, because it was like right whenever I was getting into high school, it was it was kind of trickling off the air. I think, and because I'm just I, I don't. I smoke a lot of weed, so I just, smoke it, a lot of weed. It's it's I, it's it's hard, it's hard for me. Details it's, fade it, away. Everything runs together in like a weird Mobius strip. That's like it's like House of Leaves. It's like the book House of Leaves is my head, and it's just it, there's diagrams and pictures, and, and everyone thinks it's kind of scary. You're living in reverse. Yeah, it's just bad. Um, uh, and so I did. I tried it, and I was like, this is unfunny and gothed out, and I don't give a shit. Goth, like I literally yeah. don't care. Cut to now. It's become this huge thing. It's become like this, this like big cult thing. Hot like, topic is the yeah, and and now. hot topic is literally just just cranked out as much fucking merchandise and memorabilia. To 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 their credit, if fucking junkie's gonna buy, you might as well sell. Yep. Uh, uh, but no, yeah, the the whole the whole basis of. First of all, I went into Hot Topic recently on Saturday, and that was the biggest fucking mistake I've made in a long Jesus, time. Jesus, like the Peach Pit and from 90210. It's, it's just chock full just with of black teenage... Ma- black mascara and fingerless gloves. I don't... Just, ugh. Um, oh, shout out to our fingerless gloves follower. Hell yeah! Uh, at fingerless gloves. Uh, uh, funny, funny side story. America's fingerless gloves emporium. Funny, funny side story. I wore, for about a year, I wore fingerless gloves, like, pretty non-stop. <laughs> What, but th- 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 this will never not make me chuckle. I the, just think- the thing about it, what, I don't know. Even, I didn't even know if I told you the whole story. The, I didn't really have fingerless gloves, and like my dad didn't really, like, couldn't afford them, or like they weren't readily available. So he just bought golf gloves and cut <laughs> the fingers off. Them. <laughs> and so, like, I wore. Them. <laughs> I just love the fact that you're just like, well, I can't get him the fucking Prince finger, like the Prince uh, officially, yeah. the Morris Day in the Time officially licensed fingerless gloves. So I'm just, I, I'll get him some Ernie L's gloves my, and just cut the. This is what my dad used to do. He was That's a, incredible. My dad was so a super awesome guy. Because, like, I didn't eat pizza, so my dad would scrape off all the shit and then, like, squirt ketchup on it for me. That's so awesome! Super awesome. Dad. My parents just called me a faggot and told me to stop acting stop like the skeeksis. Stop being a fucking weirdo! They just, like, st- stop telling me to acting, li- acting like the skeeksis in, um, in, um, uh, uh grocery stores. Ah, yeah, just, uh, ah. Stop asking for cereal like C3PO. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you no, know, I just, it's this weird cult thing, and, like, I. They, they, they just completely fucking latched onto it, and it's, I have no fucking time for it. I don't, I, I, I don't understand why it's become, like, like, if they were latching onto, like, Flash Gordon, I'd be Holy all about shit. it. Can you imagine that? Oh An entire God. generation influenced by Flash Gordon. <laughs> okay, okay. Or well, that generation would cure cancer, <laughs> would cure AIDS, hunger would be a thing of the past. Cars, oh God my damn it. God, that would be a generation I would be proud to foster and mentor. An entire generation that wants nothing than to be Ming the Merciless. Um, so, uh, another another side another side of that coin, <laughs> completely on. Un- uh, Almost completely unrelated. This is like a twelve-sided die of uh, topic that we we're just we're, throwing uh, shit. If if we lived in a generation that instead of worshiping Bob Marley, they worship Jimmy Cliff. Ah, god damn it! Hot shit! Another unpopular opinion. Time. Jimmy Cliff, greater than sign. 
country. Fuck Bob Marley. I don't. I will always listen to Jimmy Cliff other than Bob uh, above Bob Marley and the Whalers. Love Bob Marley. Come at me, nerds! I don't even fucking care. But um, you know, I, I guess so. We okay. So yeah, that's that's. Is that the end of? That's the wrap ups on my top. Okay, actually, that's, that's all I, I I've ticked um, all my, I've ticked all my boxes. So uh, so now it turns to me, and I I don't know. Like I just um, I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do internet things, and instead of, I'll get it here in a minute. We're we're live tweeting during we're the show. Li- I'm, I'm as trying we... to live tweet as I'm doing this, so it's it's. I'm almost. It's like watching Hemingway write. It's amazing. It's just he's so so focused and so focused and boozy. It's amazing. All right. Um, my topics. Uh, okay. This is this is number one, and this is the one that really chaps my ass about fandom. Uh, fandoms in general, and I think, and I and I explained it the other day on Twitter uh, through uh, Alan Moore's porch. Oh my God! Spoiler alert: ah! We're both Alan Moore's porch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure we've definitely shattered that that image. That one person's thing. one person's. Uh, um, Somebody's running down the street screaming, "What the fuck? I just I thought it was a thing. Everything's a lie." <laughs> um. <laughs> this is this is this is one of my main complaints. Is that everything has its own fucking fandom now. Yeah. Everything. And this and and this was the main thing that kind of got me is cuz the other day I was looking up I was looking up the bounty hunters from Star Wars. Awesome. Uh because for one moment in time I literally brain lapsed and I forgot all of them. Dengar IG88, Boss, Boss, uh Boba, Boba Fett, Fett, obviously. Uh, Forlong. Those oh, were, see, I completely forgot Forlong. Like, those, those, those were Bosk, Dengar. The, the Bosk, Dengar, and IG-88 are the, are the the ones that I cared about. Because I, I just love IG-88. N- n- yeah, I, if I could literally have a life-size IG-88, my dreams <sighs> God damn it. Anywho, for, for one moment in time, my brain laughed, and I looked him up, and there's a Wikipedia for Star Wars. Of course so, there is. Wikipedia. <laughs> You didn't know that? I did not. Yeah, just, a, just, I, I'm just a sucker for I'm a, I'm a sucker for for website name puns, and that one that one's gr- that Wiki, one's a great Wiki, one. Wikipedia was one of the first ones. Great, um, just great. But now everything has its own. It's ha- it has a wiki page, yeah. Uh, no, like its own fucking site, not a page, a whole different site. It's like instead of like regular show wiki, uh, okay, Adventure Time wiki. Uh, hey. Star Wars wiki. Or, I mean, uh, that's Wikipedia. Uh, Star Trek wiki. There's probably a Doctor Who wiki. Yeah. Everything and there, has, there is a Doctor because I've consulted the Doctor Who wiki. There's I, Doctor Who wikis. Um, Everything's got its own fucking wiki. That, uh... No, not needed. <laughs> because literally the only thing these cocksuckers are doing is taking the Wikipedia page... Just posting it And to. putting it on a different page... With a banner that has like the regular show characters. <laughs> That's it. That's all you unoriginal bastards. Like, I are can doing. understand. I can understand like the need for like a Game of Thrones wiki, because the fact that the DVD comes with a a map and a, uh, a, family, fam- a family tree, like it comes with well, its own. The DVD of a television show comes with its own appendices. Yeah. Well, and the, and the fact that that show has more characters than a Russian drama. Yeah. Like a Rush like. Like, the most dense Russian prose has less characters <laughs> than the Game of Thrones. It's, it's like the Brothers Khmer They'll off. introduce a handful of characters and then take a bushel. No, it just gets fucking... It just gets worse. Um, <laughs> so, just, anyway, I, everything has its own Wikipedia, and that's not fucking me. Yeah, and I also, like, Tumblr, while great, has also spawned this new offshoot of everything having a fandom and it's fuck yeah shipper regular show yeah fuck yeah it's yeah. it's like the shipper culture it's just the fact that like people are just are taking um uh, uh, they're they're taking like like little like perfect example there was uh, in prometheus there are two characters that share screen time together at some point and they kind of have a couple of it's two dudes, and it's like they have some like funny slash fiction. They have some funny exchanges, and I can guarantee that you can look up on my Tumblr 
and find page after page after page after page of hardcore gay and romantic encounters between these two characters. They're literally like 15 minutes of the movie. They're, you're talking about a shit that's in a fucking movie that millions of people watch that was intended for adults. Chrissy is on Tumblr all the time. Chrissy's my wife. Um, love her to death. Mother of my baby. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go to the day. Um, <laughs> so, she, she's on Tumblr, and there's like shit for like, yeah, like adventure time, yeah. like hardcore gay pornography. Yep. The, everything has hardcore gay pornography. It's now. just, it's it's there's no, if, you you, can't, if you're new to the internet. Yeah, it's, in case you didn't what, know, just what, expect a has, lot of dicks. A lot of gay <laughs> you porn. Can, you can just, you can't Cause swing a dick cause without according, hitting another dick. Because according to Craigslist, every man in this town is gay. Yeah. Um, it, you no, know, it's just this, this weird, and I understand the, like, where it comes from, I understand the the um, um, the the feelings behind it, but it just seems like it's a waste big, of time. It's a big, you know, do a fucking job. They're, 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 just, they're just blogs devoted just to this, and it's just they update it daily. Yeah, like several times daily. Uh, Jesus, um, that was that was the thing, and it, it kind of ties in with my second one. Why the fuck does everything need a cult ball? Yeah. Because cult followings used to be reserved to, like, the really darkest parts of, like, nerddom. Like, Dungeons and Dragons had a cult following. Star Trek had a cult following. Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror. Doctor uh, Who Doctor for a Who, while. They all kind of had cult... Now that they're being pushed to the surface, everything deserves its own cult. Everything has become this... Uh, uh, We're part of a selective group. Yeah, it's almost like it just like it's it's super clicky. Like it's become this, and th- no there are th- there shit. are there are notions of that working, or there there are notions of that being good. The the best example that I can give is the six seasons in a movie movement for um, Community. Mm-hmm. That it's it's a really great. Um, it was a really great way to to get the word out about the show. It was a really great way to show that the the um, uh, yeah, you. Uh, it's the very, it's the best way to show the the NBC that it's a show that people care about. The other side of the the the, the bizarro, if you will, brown coats. Huh. It was only a matter. Yeah. It was only a matter of time damn. before we started talking about brown coats. Which fandoms you gotta mention those fucking nuts. Um, uh, for the for the uninitiated, brown coats are what. Serenity and Firefly fans have designated themselves, much like Trekkies, uh, Whovians, uh, uh, stuff like that. Dudes who watch Star Wars. Do, yeah, guys who watch, get Star Wars fans. I, I, like, they don't have their own. The fact that they're so elite that they don't have their own, they're just like, eh, fucking Han Solo faggots. But, brown coats are the worst Offenders. fandoms. Oh, God. I, and I... I, I come I, I'm saying this from a I I liked of, yeah. I liked Firefly I thought it was good I liked Serenity I thought it was very entertaining Rec- not recently but um, the 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 thing that really broke the camel's back for me brown coats wise was um, this amazing website io9.com ran a a March Madness Ugh. Sort of, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. They ran a March Madness sort of bracket on what was the greatest science fiction movie ever made, and giants of filmmaking were in this category. Two thousand and one, Blade Runner, Alien, Aliens, um, uh, uh, Moon, uh, Moon, uh, Back to the Future. Like all of these incredible science fiction movies were, and also Serenity. Serenity was on there as well. Brown coats flooded the market, uh, or flooded the the voting of said bracket, and made Serenity come out on top. Serenity beat Back to the Future. Serenity beat The Fountain. Serenity beat Two Thousand and One. Did I already say that? Yeah. Uh, sh- it, it uh, Blade Runner. It beat everything. Terminator. Terminator Two. It, it, there's no fucking universe that I want to live in, that Serenity is a better movie than Terminator 2. There is not a mo- there is not a universe, or Earth, 
or or pocket universe in which I want to live in that Serenity right, is a better movie than, than Back Flash to the Gordon. than Flash Gordon, Back to the Future. And also, there's a sense of entitlement that brown coats have towards their show that's completely fucking unjustified. Arrested Development only got three seasons. Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip only got one season. Uh, the Bionic Woman only got one season. The the remake of Bionic Woman with Michelle Ryan. I it was it. really good. I I, I, you, you were looking at me with a ju- yeah, with I, judging eyes. Because I was like, you're bringing that bitch into this. <laughs> I, thought, I thought the Bionic Woman was great. Sue me. I think I could. There's just the Bible around. <laughs> I can hire a lawyer I, now. I have a case. <laughs> anyway, I just there's there's a sense of entitlement that brown coats have towards their show that's needless. Like, I don't understand why they're so butthurt about their fucking show being cancelled. If I was to take up arms for every show that I love that got cancelled, I'd be dead. Like, there's... Be, I, I, would, I would literally... I would be the Harvey Milk of nerd television <laughs> shows. I would just milk be... I, it's like, I'm Justin Partridge, and I'm here to recruit you because pushing daisies is great. Like, no one cares. No one cares. Sorry, I didn't mean to hijack. I completely hijacked you. No, you're fine, because, uh... uh it's just... Uh, I literally... I'm, I'm basically, like... And th- what we're... What I'm about to segue into... Literally... Will probably... I'm gonna try and control it and make sure we don't launch into another two hours. <laughs> um... What it is, is that... Everything... Everything now needs to be... It seems that everything now needs to be bigger than it is. Yeah. Like, everything needs to have a cult following, or everything yeah. needs to have super crazy fans. And no, we don't need that. And, like, and and I I don't understand it, but I know where it's coming from. It's people wanting to make money. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's all people want to do now, is make money. Um, and the main offender is Chuck Lorre. Ah, yes! Of uh, Big Bang Theory. <laughs> so, <laughs> So now we tip into this cup. Before we tip into this cup, though, I want to tell you a little anecdote. Uh, I went to I went to a tattoo parlor recently uh, to buy a raffle ticket to win a big fucking thing. Anywho, a guy a guy uh, at the tattoo shop. I came in and I was wearing a baseball tee that was Green Lantern. Uh, that was a Green Lantern baseball tee. Uh, I came into the show, or I, ca- I came into the, uh, I came into the tattoo parlor, and he was like, oh, did you fin- just finish watching Big Bang Theory? And I was like, what? And he was like, oh, did you just finish watching Big Bang Theory? And I was like, no, no. And he was like, oh, because of your, uh, because of your shirt. I was like, no, no, I didn't. No, cause and I saw it once on the on the, the show about on, the nerds on on the TV's what stuff. <laughs> okay, first of all, I didn't say anything because I I kind of respect this dude. He's a really cool guy. He gave me my tattoo. Yeah. So I didn't really say shit. I didn't want to slap his nuts. Yeah. Took the high road. But and then like me and me and Chrissy were discussing it later, and I was like, I was like, fucking shit, god <laughs> damn it! Like we were so pissed. <laughs> Because we're like, and, and like, this is the main topic that I'm going to bitch about, or one of the main topics we're going to bitch yeah, about. Yeah, say we're going to We're going to try to knit the shit out of this. We're going to try to cut it down, because we will literally spend four hours it on would, the it, it would be four more episodes. There was an entire nerd culture that existed before Big Bang Theory came A on. thriving, healthy. Thriving, healthy culture that was around. The only thing that Big Bang Theory did was made it digestible enough for our parents to eat it. Oh, God damn it. And, and, it, and, I know this has happened to his ass as much as it's happened to my ass. Yep. Literally every single time we go over to our parents' house and it's on, they're like, hey, do you, do you watch this show? Do you watch it? Do you catch it on? No, I, I don't, I don't watch this show. I think you would really like it. You'd probably love this show. This, this is right up your alley. No, it's not. Because they talk about Star Wars and Marvel Comics, it's automatically up here's, my fucking alley. Here's, he, he, here's every... They talk about nerdy shit. You're kind of a nerd. Here's every episode of Big Bang Theory ever. Are you ready? Kid from Roseanne can't get a date. The bitch that lives across the way from him needs free internet. 
Sheldon mentions Barry Allen. Laugh track! <laughs> I, I, I can't... <laughs> comedy! I can't... I, I have no... I, <sighs> oh, wait, 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 wait. The, and I'm going to try to loop it back down and bring it back to a close. Because literally, <laughs> we'll spend four <laughs> yeah, and a half hours no, bitching about it. There's no way that this would Chuck, end without us. Just... Chuck Lorre went on record as saying... It's like his Twitter, I think. I no, he, it was in an interview. Was I mean, it might have been in a Twitter. He went on record as saying he doesn't give a shit, paraphrasing, if, if the show... I'd love, to say, I'd love to think of him just chomping a giant cigar and be like, I don't give a good goddamn big old about the jokes or about the... Just him just fucking sitting feet on a up, pile of money. Feet up on a big old desk. <laughs> He's lighting his cigars with hundred dollar bills. Guatemalan child bringing him mirror after mirror full of cocaine. Um, he said that he really didn't care about the quality as long as it sold. Yep. That's that's paraphrasing. I, like Chuck Lorre is also the creator of Two and a Half Men, and uh, he's he's an executive producer and co-creator of Big Bang Theory. La- laugh tracks about. There's another. I think no 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 he didn't. Uh, I was about to say he had something to do with the. the how to be a gentleman, but I think that's Rickety Cricket from uh, from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm. But no, he's he he's a giant within the world of sitcoms. Like he's he's literally been CBS's cash cow, other than, than CSI. But you know, there's a, there's a moment where like I don't understand. Is that your is that really your phone? Yeah, that was my phone. Gotcha. Ooh, shit. That was just a uh, empty popcorn box. Uh. Podcasting. Um, uh, but. <laughs> I, I, going back to what Rocky said, that that the fact that everyone doesn't understand why we don't like this show, like everybody, there, there's not, there's never I, all the conversations that I've had about the Big Bang Theory has always included the sentence. It's like me going, "No, I don't like Big Bang Theory," and the other person being otherworldly shocked that I don't, that it's not my favorite show in the world. Like, they have no idea why I haven't just latched onto this thing like a fucking mollusk. And But it's not funny. It's not funny at all. I've, I've watched a few episodes, and literally every time the, the group of people that I'm with are like, ha, 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 I'm like this stone face. Stone face, like I'm literally Buster fucking Keith <laughs> watching this shit. <laughs> I don't fucking care. And, like, I... Uh, we, we Matt and I have talked about this between many a bowl and many a pitcher. Talking about how if, if 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 by some miracle that Odin lords down upon us is that if we ever got to be the showrunners of Big Bang Theory, it would become a vastly different show Horrible because they would they would different. constantly be making like Cronenberg jokes and talking about how much they love Mobius and like constantly quoting Lynch's Dune. Like like, like the 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 it would be Roseanne would literally be living. It would be the most in- to the soundtrack of like Bauhaus. It would be <laughs> walking around being a moody weirdo. It, just every, uh, every horrible, disgusting, nerdy thing that we love would be spilled out on screen, and 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 no one would watch it, and we would make no money, and and we would immediately get fired. But you know what? We would be doing a nerd show. We would be, We'd yeah. finally be doing a show in which nerds would be like, "Oh yeah, that's us." That's that's because exactly. that's my main. That is my main complaint with the Big Bang Theory is that the fact that the the nerds, quote unquote, that that it that it portrays upon the show are not the nerds that I know. Like, are not the nerds that I... It a, it's the exact fucking problem that I had with Glee. The first season of Glee is incredible. I, it, it's, 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 it's a show about misfits. It's people who don't fit in with each other that find a solace within the things that they're doing. And then it became about pretty people who can sing, and Matthew Morrison didn't talk as much, and uh, I didn't care. Big Bang Theory is the exact same way as the fact that it shows me people that are, are like a facsimile of people that I know. It's it's basically just people yeah. saying things with no yeah. weight behind it. Because when I first... Because I, I watched the first season of Glee, and it was fucking dark. It's it is. Bleak. It's bleak. And then it became... And like after that, I was like, why why the fuck is everybody dating everybody? Nobody fucking likes... Nobody fucking liked you in high school. Nobody. Mm-hmm. If you were in that group of people, 
nobody talked to you. And both of us and were like, both. Oh, of- oh, we got we got slushy spilling in our face. <laughs> ain't that a ain't, ain't that a gas? No, that I got shoved in janitor's closets and, and 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 hockey checked on stairs. We like got, a- I, we didn't have a really bad bullying problem, but like nobody fucking talked to us. Yeah. And it's not like we were outcasts. They just didn't give a shit. Yeah. Nobody cared. And the fact that they were good, and they had like a band. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. We had. If, they're no- not, if they can't afford a fucking bus or a ramp, they sure as shit can't afford a fucking a full band. band like with, no, 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 no. With an accomplished piano. I want. I want an overweight, nearly diabetic, half blind, old fat white woman clanging away on an out of tune piano. That's your fucking glee. <laughs> That's, that was that was what I lived. That was it's real. like rickety fucking rickety risers, horrible props, plastic hats, just terrible, shit terrible that, and, and and doing songs to people that could not give Nobody a shit less. Shit. To everybody to hated. Song. Everybody hated what you did. Oh, uh, fun story. Uh, the last three, four shows I did, my parents didn't come to see. Yeah. My uh, they never, they my my senior my senior year. Some I of never... my best fucking work. <laughs> I say some of my best work like I'm a fucking filmmaker. I did shitty. Well, fuck that! No, you did great. I, work. I, did, I can guarantee I, you did amazing I, I did work. Pretty, I did pretty good shows. Uh, but no, I just I it became about, it's both of those shows are are like they're it it, it it's like a face value of, of things that I really love and it's it's insults me. It genuinely it genuinely pisses me off. Yeah. Okay. We're. Yeah, we're, nip- we're nipping this in the bud. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the bullshit bell and we're cashing out. Um, <laughs> uh, I think we kind of covered that one. Uh, and like I say, I, I mentioned to I mentioned to Justin earlier, uh, and I'm, I mentioned it through uh, one of the uh, fuck me one of the one of the one of the uh, tweets. That everything has its own fan ba- uh, has its own fandom now. Yeah, um, like fucking all those ridiculous bullshit shows on Discovery Channel, the yeah. History Channel, mm. all those fucking food shows. Jesus, yeah. Like, all, everybody's got their own fandom now, and it's literally just cashing in. It's just trying to make money. Um, and one of the major culprits behind it, and I've and I've talked about it, and I literally have all the right to bitch as much as I fucking want. <sighs> Because I read all four of the motherfucking books. Twilight. <laughs> Twilight. I, was really, I was really hoping you were going to say that. Twilight has overrun the fucking... All, all of the fucking industry uh, has overrun the, the, the industry... Like, the, the book industry with... Uh, has... Uh, Flooded the market. It's become well, this, it's become this juggernaut. I actually, I actually overrunning the book market with shitty fan fiction. Yeah, because now we now we have a best selling trilogy. There's literally based on fan fiction. There's literally if you go into Books a Million, if you go into any bookstore, Supernatural, you'll find a little bitty island right in the middle fucking aisle, so all the teen girls don't have to look look far. You will find a a whole selection. Of shitty fucking books, and I read all four of the books. They're horrible. They're literally some of the worst pieces you, of shit. You are a stronger man than I. They, I got, I got, through, I got through the first one. And Chrissy read them too, and she said I, I literally just pushed through them, just because it was something that I, I kind of like, because she latched on super early. Like she was on it. But she wrote, she rode the wave from the middle of the ocean into the shore. Like she'd been on it since, since day the one. Yeah, she wasn't one of these little preppy fan girls. Um, she, uh, but no, like, and like, she's read a shit ton of books on her nook that are exactly the exactly same. Exactly the fucking same. And it's, and it's trash. We are in the wrong goddamn market. Instead of spewing our bullshit into this podcast, we need to be writing some sort of, so, some sort of, like, uh, oh, uh, a small town girl falls in love with a kraken, and uh, it's a forbidden love, but she loves tentacle rape. What? Absolutely addicted to We can rape. run to the goddamn bank laughing. We I would, would literally be sitting. I, we, I, we, we make it a trilogy. If I'm sitting. Tentacle rape. The trilogy. Just <laughs> call it that. We don't even have to. We don't even have to pretend to write it well. No, we don't. 
But I anyway the, the that that's flooded the market. And it's a piece of shit, and is it's almost finished though. It's oh no, it's yes, once the last yes. once the last movie. It's almost it's Michael done. Sheen. <laughs> it's not almost done because all these little preteen bitches and their forty year old moms who read the fucking books and are <laughs> addicted are growing up now that's and they're true. moving into harder core shit. Like, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey is the new Twilight. Yeah. In case you didn't fucking notice. No, I know, because in we... In case you don't pick up Newsweek. We have, yeah. In, every, it's... One, two, and three have been the highest selling books in America... For a while. For literally the entire summer. And also, in, in working at, at the, the bookstore that I work at... We had to get, we had to special order boxes of the Fifty Shades of Grey books to to sell, because we, yep. we were selling out so quickly. Yep. Not only that, but now there's another book that, that's become a, a bestseller that is literally, to, to, to quote Chris Traeger, Parks and Recreation, yep, mm. um, to quote Chris Traeger, it's the exact same book. Different cover. The The chick has a different name. The guy has a different name. But it's the exact same book. Uh, I will, I will uh, again, mention uh, my wife. Because uh, she read all three of the books. And I mentioned... The, the Fifty Shades? The Fifty Shades great. And I mentioned this to a friend of mine, and he was like... And he was like... And I told her what he thought of it. He was like, yeah, but she still fucking read them. I was like, no, you don't understand. I was like, she reads a book like every day. I was like, since she's, she's like Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, she's lit. Like she has, she's read over two hundred books in a year and a half, two years. Wow. Like she's read a shit ton of books. Spread, mind you, spread out the other Game mm, of Thrones book. Like at the, I, mind you, mind you, most of that's trash novels. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and dime store romance. And she'll admit it, but. Uh, she she told me after she read Five Fifty Shades of Grey, she's like, I was like, how is it? She's like, eh. Like first book, she was like, eh. She's like, I'm, I guess. She's like, I'll keep reading it because what else am I gonna do? Um, and after she read all of them, she was like, it's fan fiction. It's glorified, overpriced fan fiction. Yep. She was like, because, and I don't read fan fiction. She was like, at one point they go to a club in Fifty Shades of Grey. She's like, that's what you fucking do in fan fiction. Yeah. You go to a club. It's like, well, the characters, I don't really know what to do with them. Uh, I'm going to do a collab. <laughs> um, she said, she was like, it's glorified fan fiction. And she was like, and she was like, plus, she was like, hey, everybody's making such a big, big hoo 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 because it's so kinky and it's so erotic. She was like, I've read books a thousand times more erotic than that book. <laughs> there, was a, there was a picture that I saw on Tumblr that somebody, it's some, some Banksy-like vandal, was going into uh, was going into uh, Waterstones in in London and placing a, um, a a sheet of paper over the Fifty Shades of Grey book that was basically pimping all of the hor- like all of the horrific and hardcore smut that you can find on online like in on fan fiction websites. It gave like a list of fan fiction websites that you can go to to read better written and harder core pornography, basically. <laughs> like, it was just... just I've got a few sites if you want them. Just they're in. great. They're great, yeah. I just... I, I, I can give you two or three right off the top of my head that, that are great erotic... Uh, that are, are uh, great erotic stories websites. Nifty.org. Yes! I was... I was, I was literally about to say You know say what it, it used to be called? It's on my favorites. You know what it used to be called? What? Freegaysex.org. <laughs> I'm pretty fucking sure. Anywho, free gay sex. I was, like, uh, I'm really glad that I don't have to pl- uh, have to pay a, a, a sixpence for my gay sex. I can just get it for free at nifty.org. Um, uh, did you, did you have any more topics? Uh, I, 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 you're I, live I, tweeting, so I didn't want. I had I had one more topic, and I can kind of it's it's literally just a rollout, and it's it's going to be the close of my segment. You don't if you, if you belong to a fandom. Please remember to try to keep it enclosed. Try to keep it sacred to yourself. Because what you're unknowingly doing 
especially with Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey, is that you're pulling your mother into this. Yeah, you you're really, really you're really you getting really moms want, into. Do you really want your mother in your in your fan base? <laughs> you really. Do you really want your mother right beside you? Talk about you your you're, mother to when t- you're flicking your bean to Jacob, <laughs> you know, becoming a wolf and rubbing up against, you know, her baby. <laughs> it's the image. That's, that's, the fucking, that's what happens. Spoiler alert! That's what happens in the last book. He falls in love with the baby. Oh yeah, yeah. They, uh, the werewolf falls in love with the fucking baby. I, <laughs> just the just the mental image of just like a preteen, like just just really. Huffing and panting over this fucking just book, a huge, just really, bulky motherfucker. just, just really, just, just, just really, just smashing her pussy to it, and then like her mom comes in and wants to have a conversation with it. So that first episode, the meat, the meat of, the, of the episode done. Jesus, I uh, we're we're now with the we're now at the hour thirty five minute mark. Oh, that's not I'm so bad. I'm I just I we're I, a good movie. I cannot exactly we're 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 we're, we're a hearty Paul Thomas Anderson film <laughs> that that you can take in on a on a breezy Sunday. Just while you're chewing, a couple of under while, you're, while you're chewing peyote and and wearing tweed, we have um. Uh, we we pimped the, the the email and the the Twitter earlier week. I, I don't have we received any questions via Twitter? We, uh, I did. I, we probably we, we did get a retweet. Did we? We did. Oh I, shit! I said hating on Big Bang Theory. Unpop hashtag unpopular opinion. Hashtag you're welcome. Hashtag first show. And a chick named Diana retweeted our favorite. Oh, fantastic! Let's see who uh, bless she you, is. bless you, Diana. Is that is that at Minshi Vixen? She's followed. B- uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, fantastic. She's great. And we will follow her. Uh, look at that. Um, uh, no, we have, um, in, 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 in keeping with our, our actual regimented, um, section, we actually have, we want to do a, an email section. And, uh, and we have gotten emails. Have we? Really? I, I know we had two. We have three now. Holy shit! And the third one is Big as shit. Oh, good. The I can... third one is huge. Fantastic. Um, we also we have an email song. Oh, 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 oh. And I wanted to play throughout the, 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 the email section. We uh, he's just he's reacting to the it, fact that the the it's what? X? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. But no, the, the wait, wait, wait. Just to give you an idea of just the kind of dudes we are. So far, we've played Talking Heads. Are you intro this intro to the show? Bob Dylan, uh, the offerings of the snake god, and we're about to play X. We're about to play X, yeah. Um, uh, we we decided that that we want to try to do as much media as possible. I'm sure that once once I actually get better at editing, I'll be able to to flow, to, flow to shoehorn the these songs into the episodes a little, a little bit, bit better. better. Yeah, but we uh, literally it's me just right now just. Lowering, yeah, and, just uh, just sliding, sliding a slider up and the down. The volume bar. Uh, but you know what? When 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 you get indie, you, you get quality. Um, and by quality, we mean um, uh, slapdash bullshit. But no, the last bit of the the show, we wanna we wanna take a time to to listen to our future children, to uh, to to come to a, to come to an understanding and discussion with the uh, with our non-existent audience. So. Um, uh, Go ahead and uh, read out. It, it try the because uh, I know we have a question from uh, from Morgan Critchfield. Morgan, yes. The uh, the. Wait, wait, wait! wait. I, I want to read. I want to read his full. I want to read his full email because he uh, basically does our job for us. Here, turn up, turn up the music at least, because I want to keep this playing throughout the uh, right. throughout throughout the segment. I I just don't want to. I don't want to be drowned out. I don't want the brilliant Morgan's words. The to be Morgan lost. Critchfield's uh, glowing and and to be and, lost uh, under the and, under the powerful vocals of X Team Sabrina and John Depp. And our, his razor sharp prose. So we're we're pulling up the email. We, at the, we right. want to end. We want to end every show answer with at least your, with at least. We will a, answer your email. We'll, we will literally answer anything and everything. Hate mail. We'll answer hate it mail. It doesn't matter. Alan Moore's porch we'll, at gmail.com. We'll gleefully. Uh, we will. We love it. All right, this is from Morgan. Uh, this is the text. This is Morgan from the wildly successful Off Topical Podcast, available wherever you could get podcasts. Keyword Off Topical, all one word. This is verbatim. He put this all in there himself. <laughs> this is not me glorifying him. Uh, we've added nothing. We've added nothing. 
However, Off Topical is available also on iTunes. iTunes, and you Stitcher. And you can't just get shit on iTunes. You can't just put it on We're iTunes. Not even, well, I'm not even trying to get the uh, a, a moment in you, which to get on iTunes. You've got to do a lot of backhanded dealing. Yeah. You've got to do some... You gotta do some shit to get on iTunes. You have to. You have to at least. You have to come. There's got to be some level of legitimacy. You have to come to the Apple headquarters with one of Steve Jobs' teeth from his newly excavated grave. Okay. Uh, this is this is his email. Okay. Congrats on the podcast. Maybe we should form a network like Wonder Twin Powers Network. Oh. All right. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Uh, my question for the podcast is, and this is for and this is for Justin. Uh, what I was trying to pause it because that's our that's our outro music. I don't I don't want to tip our oh, I don't want to tip oh, our. Oh my gosh! Oh. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Um, this is this is his question. What is the greatest multi-title crossover, i.e., Infinity Gauntlet, Identity Crisis, etc., and why? This is this is a question for you. I you want to think it's for me? Um, I, you, you, I, you've read a couple of uh, big events though. Uh, yeah, a few, but. Uh, I haven't read enough to have, to form a very decent opinion. Um, uh, oh Jesus. Um, honestly, I for DC, I'm I'm gonna do for DC and Marvel. Uh, DC, I would probably say uh, Grant Morrison's Final Crisis. I I really Final like Crisis I I really good. really fucking enjoy have. Final Crisis. Um, when I first read it month to month, I didn't like it because it was it's it's very. Dense. It's super. It's super fucking dense and 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 balls nuts insane. But it's it's kind of the best. Uh, Gr- Morrison writes superheroes like gods. Like he 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 definitely he, he takes a reverence to, and he and he not only does does he have a reference for a uh, reverence for them, but he puts them in Final Crisis in a situation that's that's truly dire and truly epic. And it's yeah. it's just it's a really great. There's a bunch of spinoffs. For Final Crisis, that were really great. Uh, Legion on Three Worlds by Jeff Johns was really awesome. That has to do with the Legion of Superheroes. And uh, Rogue's Revenge, which is uh, the, the Flash Rogues taking revenge on Libra, the, uh, the the high priest of crime. After after, It's just, it's great. It's all sorts of comic book insanity, and it's, um, it's available... In trade form, and the, the rest of the Final Crisis crossovers are are in uh, trades as well. For Marvel, I would have to say Civil War. I really, I, I, I recently reread it, and I'd forgotten just how heavy-handed and and insane it really is. And there, I just, I, I really, really enjoy it. Um, and it was coming off of a time that I was really. Um, Event heavy in in uh, in in reading Marvel um, Avengers vs X Men that's going on right now is really great, um, but in, it, it, I, I I genuinely I probably have to say Final Crisis or uh, um, uh, I have to say Civil War I, I really really enjoyed it. Okay, All right. next email. Next email is from Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie asked if the Star Trek fandom and the Star Wars fandom got into a fight, who would win? What if they were allowed weapons tags from their respective fandom? Uh, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down. I don't know if she's talking about actual fans. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like characters. Or or the actual Cause, universe. Because fans no one's gonna win. It's gonna no, be it's gonna be it's a four hour slap of, fight. It's just gonna be fields of like nerds with bruises. Yeah, just a slap fight. If they, if they were allowed to use the actual like working tech from their universes, though, um, and and this and this kind of balloons up into if if the actual universe has fought themselves, hands down, Star Wars. Star Wars. Anyway. Star Wars. And I, I thought about this question the other day uh, because that whole fucking universe is founded on violence. Yeah. Like, the whole universe, like, Star Trek, like, their mission was to spread peace and bring... Explore. Explore and, and bring the Trade Federation, like, or the, the, the Federations... Yeah, to, cra- to get more more planets to join this yeah. UN-like uh, thing. Uh, and, and also, just, just the sheer size <laughs> and volume of Star Wars ships in going against Federation ships. Well, and the uh, uh, size of ships uh, thrown out... It's literally an entire because like the the series 
uh, started. <laughs> um, <laughs> with separatists wanting to break away from the the tyranny. The, the yeah, tyranny. yeah. It, and then, and then, of course, this this gave rise to the Galactic Senate forming the Clone Army. Yeah. And then the Clone Wars taking place, and then the Galactic Empire rising, and then the the rebellion fighting against the Empire, and finally bringing it down. Mm. So literally, the whole of this sextology. <laughs> Six to six, 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 six whatever. <laughs> the two trilogy. There's really only one trilogy. There's one ass trilogy. There's one, the one fucking trilogy. There was one that really. There's me. one trilogy, and there's a bunch of fucking movies that he did just. To, but no, I just and also Star Wars are the only. It's because they have fighters. I don't. Blaster. I don't. I don't the, the, the that fact that blasters, Star Wars lightsabers. That but, but also, Star Trek doesn't have like a an actual like unit. like an air force. Yeah, like they don't. Like they don't fighter. have. They don't have a a, 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 a select number of of, uh, of yeah X like they they I mean they have they have a military and they have like a marine like the the security units on either ship yeah. but like you said they're they're more exploratory Peaceful. vessels yeah. like they're not so yeah I, I, it's Star Wars it'd probably be Star Wars uh, and this one is from Alex okay uh, I I think she wanted this first part to be for us but we'll we'll read it. Uh, a good start, since this is your first podcast, might be for listeners to get to know you guys. Maybe this is a really shitty angle, but at least I'm trying. I don't... I, we literally we, we don't, don't... We don't... We don't fault you. We think we, it's amazing. We will literally eat anything that you give us. Um, and it is a ten-part question. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should use this as, like, a lightning round. Like, like you, you say a question, we give two quick answers, we move no, on to another one. No, it's literally, like, it's bang, 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 bang. It's, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's... Good. Uh, First character you ever fell in love with? Um, that, that I ever fell in love with? Yeah, I fell in love with. Jimmy Olsen. Uh, mine was uh, Catwoman. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Jimmy Olsen just makes it sound gay. Yeah. It's super, super it gay. Like you no, Jimmy Olsen, Olsen, like, no, he was Superman's pal. Like, gay. He, he was You're constantly gay. gay. I'm this really, I'm, 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 I'm super gay. Character uh, that I never expected to love as much as I do now. Iron Fist. Danny Rand. Danny, okay. Um, I don't know. Like, there's there's a bunch of characters that I that I kind of super love. Um, dating myself back um, in the in the first Avatar. Um, suck my dick. <laughs> Donnie Brasco. Uh, <laughs> he was the Donnie guy. Wahlberg. No, Donnie Brasco. He is great. He's a great character Donnie actor. Did the voice. Uh, Zuko. Zuko, the the fireball. Oh, yeah, yeah. He literally hated him because he was a prick at first. Yeah. And he turns into like a little darling of a character. Next question: the character everyone else loves that I don't. Uh, Wolverine. I th I think I think Wolverine's super over. No, no, no. I th I'm changing it. Gambit. Gambit. I do not. Fucking understand why everyone loves Gambit. I, yeah. He's 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 I, a placeholder. I'll, I don't. I'll I'll say that. I'll say um. I'll say Poison Ivy. Really? A lot of chicks love Poison Ivy. I don't give a shit. That is true. I do not care. It, 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 there's yeah. only uh, there's really only one girl for Batman, and that's Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah. Um. Character, a character that I love that everyone else hates. <laughs> oh shit. Um. Uh, Oh, God okay, damn. Maybe, that's, maybe yeah, you, you, go, you, you go first, yeah. Um, I don't really know. Like, that's a, that's a good question. I don't... Because I was looking at these earlier, and I was like, oh, fuck, we're going to have a hard time answering these. Uh, shit. Um, <coughs> I... God damn, that's, that, 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 that's, a, that's a damn fine question. A uh, character that I love... Um, uh, Flash Rogues. I, I would say the Flash Rogues because I I were I really there's something about that group of villains that only exists to fuck with the Flash. Like I think that's really interesting to me. I I'm I don't a... necessarily think that they're hated, but I I don't think people think about them. Oh oh oh! I've got one. Uh, super fucking like we're going off on a way different tangent. Um, I love these characters and everyone else I know. Justin Partridge. Uh, <laughs> it's the, throwing me under the bus immediately. Well, I, that, I that's it. the only fucking person that I know that knows these characters. 
And it's Walter and Perry from... Ah, uh, God damn it! It's Walter and Perry from Home Movies. Yeah. If, if you don't know Home Movies, Brendan Small, the guy that made Metal Metalocalypse, did it. It's these two characters that him and H. John Benjamin did. And how they tell you like this? Are they just this, this, this? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. They're fucking weird characters, and I love the shit out of them, and Justin can't stand them. Um... Okay, uh... Not, 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 I don't hate them. I don't. I, I don't think that they. Uh, they, yeah. they just annoy the piss out of me. It's, okay, just okay. move on. Moving on. Uh, a character that I used to love but don't any longer. Oh Jesus. Um. Uh, God damn it. Yeah. No. That's that's really fucking hard. Um. Uh, a character that I used to love but that I don't anymore. I will say Hunt. Cyclops. Cyclops. Cyclops for me because it, it, Cyclops is has with with the current Avengers versus X Men. He's kind of he's turned into this very I'm, dour like warlord. Like and he, and he used to be like this bastion of he was the Boy Scout he, yeah. of X, of the X Men. I'm trying to think. There was somebody. There was somebody I was thinking of the other day, and I was like, I was like, oh man, I was like, I used to think they were so cool. Now I'm I'm noticing that they're kind of a whiny bitch. And I can't remember who it was. I, I, I'm going to kick myself in the ass later, but, uh, anywho. Um, the character I would totally smooch. Character you to Is that that's the actual... Verbatim. That's, verbatim. that's a real... That's verbatim what you have. The character, character. I would totally smooch. Um, um, Carol Danvers. Perry the, White. The, right the, in the mouth. <laughs> No, That's Carol. Carol. Carol Danvers, the uh, the uh, former Miss Marvel, the the current Captain Marvel. I just she's she's literally she's in, in inside of this whole new movement towards feminist comics with with Kelly Sue DeConnick. Uh, and I, you're I, gonna I, it's, have it's to really help great. me with this because I I notice I notice art more than I notice uh, story. I haven't read any of the comics. Uh, who's the new Batwoman? Oh, um, uh, Kate Kane, the redhead. Yep. Yeah. Boom. Uh, she's her. great. She's a lesbian. Uh, the character I'd want to be like. Or who, 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 who would you want to be like? Character Tony Stark. Hands down, Tony Stark. Are you kidding me? See, Tony Stark. Uh, I would say uh, either Tony. Uh, see, I don't know. I, I think I'm too in the closet to be Tony Stark. <laughs> It's not a gay. I love I love balls too much. I want to be no, that's Tony Stark. A, that's not a gay thing. That's just a too much. Like he's too out there. Like he's too aggressive. I guess. Yeah, too introvert or too I, extrovert. I'm more. I'm more like. Um, I'm more like uh, uh, Bruce Banner. Um, oh yeah, I, yeah. I, I'd be more like, like Ruffalo's like, Banner. Yeah, the like super twitchy, super, super weird. Yeah, in the in the in the in the shade kind of. All um, right. Uh, the character I'd slap. I've got mine. Uh, shit, go, uh, go. Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus just, Christ on the cross. Just slap the shit because out of Wolverine. Because if you ever, because we've been catching a lot of the new, of the, like, the older, like, the original cartoon series. Yeah, the 90s X-Men. The 90s X-Men. And literally every show degenerates, if it's, if it's got Wolverine in it, it literally has it degenerating into him crying and bitching about how hard his life is. <laughs> go the fuck up, you've got... Adamantium claws, you asshole! You're indestructible. You're you're the best at what you do, and I know that because you say it constantly. Uh, Emma Frost. I, w I would have to say Emma Frost. I, oh, I think God I damn. think I think Emma Frost deserves a deserves a, a good fucking good hard yeah. pimp slap. Yeah. All right. Uh, number nine. Uh, number nine. Number nine. Number, ni number uh, nine. A pairing that I love. Um, uh, this is too broad, so I'm gonna give a fucking broad answer. Uh, Hawkeye and Spider Woman. Uh, currently, with currently within the with within the new the new Avengers comic book, uh, Hawkeye is dating Jessica Drew, the Spider Woman, and I, I find their I, I find their coupling really awesome. I really like also um, Grant Morrison's um, Lois Lane and Clark Kent. I, I really I really like the way that he that he writes. Um, Lois Lane and Clark Kent. Green Arrow, Black Canary. Ah, oh, it's so great. It's just it, that that's a pairing that never gets old to me. They're, I, they're I think just, they're amazing. They're super sweet. Um, number ten. Uh, last last question. Final. 
Final question. A pairing I despise. Oh, Jesus. Um... I'm gonna go to a... Fuck me. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go to... I'm gonna go to a... a mutation of yeah. the... Uh, I'm gonna say... I don't think this has to be... I just... It's, yeah, comics gonna, are just the only thing that I latch to. Yeah. But. Well, because fucking... It's got a shitload of characters, yeah. so why not? Uh, a pairing that I despise. Uh, in X-Men First Class... <coughs> One, the Magneto and uh, Xavier. No, 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 they were beautiful. Yeah, I just at any point in time, I just like fucking kiss, just kiss and get it over with. <laughs> Magneto and Mystique. Yeah, they try. They forced that. Yeah, down. yeah. they were they really, really shoved that down. Our really, throat. really. And at the end, they rushed the shit out of it. Anyway, that and and Emma Frost and um, Sebastian Shaw. Sebastian Shaw. Kevin Bacon relationship. Yeah, I, I they, kept saying Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Right? Bacon. Um, uh, uh, Ray their, McCormick. Their, <laughs> I, their I, relationship, I, yeah, well, mainly because I don't like January Jones. Yeah, she's a bit of a bitch. bitch. <laughs> she's a, she's a big bitch. Um, uh, Good actress. I you, she's great. Yeah. I think she's great. Um, uh, pairing that uh, that I that I really hate. Um, uh, Cyclops and Emma Frost because they're they're now they're they're oh, an they're item. They, they they've been an item for a while in the comics, and it's just. I, I I don't give a shit. I don't I don't care. Like I I like like she kissed Namor in a in a in a recent issue in a recent in a, in a recent issue of Avengers vs X Men and I fucking love that because I just love how I love Namor. I think he's great. Just seriously, I, make I just, a movie about that. Yeah, I know, right? Old Wingfoot. Like I just did him fighting Nazis in World War Two. Cap, that'd be incredible. So cool. I'd, I'd listen I'd, him and plus just. It, it, any t- any excuse to get Chris Evans in more movies, I'll, I'll completely I'll completely be behind. So, first episode, we are, done, we are dusted. Back. We're 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 just now hitting. Um, we're hours? we're at we're at one fifty six. We're at one hour fifty six minutes. Uh, we we honestly we cannot express enough. How great we think that you guys are for listening to this. If you've made it, this yeah. If far, you've made it this far, we'll take if, a shot if, 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 if you've, you've made, made it to the far. end of it, we we will make you t-shirts. We'll fucking we'll send you a, a laminated card, and then probably lick your asshole. We don't even care. Um, I'll do it. I'll... Uh, it's next time we we're, we're gonna try to make this a bi-weekly yeah. thing. Bi-weekly. Yeah. So. Um, if you have suggestions for future topics, having ideas, any hate mail, I'm really stressing hate mail because I was <laughs> really, so we were really, really looking forward I to our first got on, hate I mail. literally got on Twitter the other day just to stir up hate mail. <laughs> That's the thing with the I Invader started, Zim thing started, that went on. I started kicking out fucking brown coats. <laughs> I started kicking out feminists. I started kicking out everybody just to try to get something. Uh, uh, but if, you've got, if you have anything, please... Uh, uh, email us, uh, hit us up on Twitter. Alan Moore's Porch at gmail.com. And at Alan Moore's Porch. On Twitter. Well, uh, on Twitter. Also, uh, you can follow us personally at M. Turner Genius on Twitter. At J. Partridge the Third on Twitter. Guys, thank you so, Appreciate so it. fucking much, much, much love. for coming all the way to the end of this. A pretentious, really pretentious, and tirade-filled journey. We um, uh, we're gonna cue up the uh, the the, oh, the, the, oh. the final music that we have. Thank you so so much for listening to our bullshit. Uh, for fandom, we we will see you next week. Thank you so much, Alan Moore's porch. I'm Justin Partridge. I'm Rocky Turner. Siege courageous.